Hello, sports fans. It's me, Sportsman Z, Bob Zalke. And today, I'm playing another random baseball game with my Stratomatic Baseball computer game. Today, it'll be a game from 1982. It's going to be the 1982 Montreal Expos, which I will be taking control of, against the 1982 Houston Astros who at the time were in the National League, even though they are now in the American League. So we, this is, uh, I guess you could call this Random Baseball Thursday, uh, mainly because it's a random game from within my set, and it's a Thursday. So I am going to set the lineup for the Expos. Let's see here. I may edit the lineup. Let me see. Um, hmm. I don't know. That lineup looks pretty. That's a pretty solid lineup. Uh, Doug Flynn was a uh, what? Second base two E15. Tavares was a second base four. Ouch. All right. Yeah. The line. I guess I'm happy with the lineup. Probably not the pitcher, though. They got Ray Burris. They're recommending Ray Burris. I'm going to go with Charlie Lee. Remember Charlie Lee? Let's go with him. Um, so, and then the computer. Here, let's get my lovely face out of the way. Off to the side. Um, the uh, Astros are going with Bob Nepper. Loved Bob Nepper. So... Let me turn down the sound on this. Let's see here. I'm going to turn sound down. And then we will get underway. So, oh wait, all right, I got to move. I have to move my face again because I moved, I overcompensated too much. So let's put it right there. So that I can swing away. You can see we got Tim Rock Reigns and there's Bob Nepper. So let's get this party started. Timmy Reigns. Rock Reigns. And did he get a hit? No, he did not. Warren Cromarty's up. And he. And the one thing I did forget to do since my last random baseball game was a while ago, I forgot to. Put it on, roll the dice so that you can see the dice rolling. But, um, um, you know, I'll have to make a mental note to fix that for later. So the Hawk, Andre Dawson, gets aboard. That brings up Al Oliver. Lefty on lefty here. And that's going to be it. So now it is Dickie Thon for the uh, Astros. And you notice the lovely Astrodome here. Who could forget the Astrodome? So we got Charlie Lee pitching to Dickie Thon to lead off. And Dickie Thon gives that thing a ride, but it looks like Dawson's going to get it, going to track it down. Terry Poole is up. Terry Poole, who interestingly never played baseball until he was in high school which is incredible that he went on to be in the major leagues when the first time he ever picked up a bat was in high school. So Ray Knight is up with pool aboard and one out, um, and we will pitch to Ray Knight. Um, all right, I'm going to throw. And he, he was safe. So pool now has moved down to second on a stolen base with Ray Knight still up. Ray Knight, who was married to a tennis star. I think he was married to Chris Everett. Was he married to Chris Everett? I think he was. And now that brings up Jose Cruz. Jose Cruz was a mainstay on those great Astros teams of the 80s. And he hits the ball to the other side, and he's out. So we got Gary Carter facing Nepper. Of course, this was only a few years before, or maybe even only one or two years before Carter was um, sent to the Mets. 
or signed with the Mets or however that happened. Tim Wallach is up with one away. And it looks like Wallach's going shopping at the home run house. No, he's out. <laughs> Unreal. Unreal. The game tricked me. It showed it like it was going to be a home run, but it was really a fly ball. So Chris Spire is up with two down in the second. And Chris Spire gives it a bit of a ride, but Cruz is going to be under it. So that retires the side, and up comes the Astros again. And uh, Phil Garner, scrap iron. And this was a few years after he was on the 79 We Are Family Pirates. And now we got Alan Ashby. And of course, Alan Ashby was also a catcher for many years for the Astros. Their starting catcher. And Tony Scott is up at the plate, and he's out. So we got Doug Flynn up at the plate against the Nepper. And he, whoa, he walked. Charlie Lee is up. I really hate sacrificing, even with pitchers, but I will in this particular case. And it's only a 56% chance of being successful. So, whoa, nice. They threw the ball away. There's an error by Ashby on that. Well, now, you know what? I'm going to do it again because now we can try to move runners over to second and third. And that was a wild pitch, and now I don't even have to do it, and Reigns gets his at bat. And he gets out. So Warren Crow Marty is up. The Crow, one down, runners at second and third. And he hits it to the other side. That should get a run in, and it does. And the Expos take a one nothing lead on the Astros. Both teams, of course, played in a dome at the time. As you can see, we're in the Houston Astrodome. And uh, Montreal also played an Olympic Stadium, which was a dome. And Art Howe is up. Art Howe, who, who managed many East teams and had uh, many battles with Billy Bean as the manager of the team, or at least according to Moneyball. And Bob Nepper is up. One down. Let's hope Charlie Lee can get him out, and he does. On a strikeout, and Dicky Thon. And Dicky Thon looks like he's going to pop out to Spire. So we go to the top of the fourth, and the Expos are leading one up here. This Astros team, though, was a good team. I think both teams were pretty good. And Oliver looks like he hit it down the line. He did for a double. Carter following him. And Nepper the lefty having to pitch to the right hand. And Carter. And he hits to the other side. That may move Oliver to third. And it does. And now Wallach has a man 90 feet away. With only one out. Even a fly ball will get him home. And that is a ground ball to Howe, but uh, he doesn't advance. The runner doesn't advance, so Spire, it's all up to Spire here to get this runner home. And he does not. So we are going to the bottom of the fourth. Still got the one nothing lead. Pool against Lee. Pool hits it up the middle. And he's two for two on the day. And now this time I am going to watch him. So we're going to... Oh, no, I guess the watch was automatically on. So 60% is what Pool is at. And now Ray Knight, he didn't, get, I guess he didn't get a lead. And Ray Knight gets a base hit. So there's two runners on, no outs. Julio, or no, Jose Cruz. Not Julio. And, man, Lee walks the bases loaded. Well, he doesn't. He didn't walk the other two guys, but he got a. He did a walk that loaded the base. So now Phil Garner, scrap iron is up. 
computer brought the infield in for me. I also don't like playing the infield in, but I will go along with that. And now I'm not going. Oh, wait a minute. They did. Yeah, they tied the game. Um, yeah. I will let the infield stay in. I thought maybe they got him. But Ashby's up. So they didn't get the run. They got the runner at the plate. So we have one down. And uh, the corner's in. I guess I can go along with that. And that's going to be a pop-out. That's not going to help them. So it's, it's, uh, it's now two down and Art Howe up. And it looks like he's going to pop out to Spire. So it's 1-1 tied up here in the top of the fifth. Doug Flynn up. Doug Flynn, of course, played many years for the New York Mets and was known for his more for his glove than his bat. And Charlie Lee is now up with one out. Flynn is gone. And Charlie Lee looks like he's going to fly out too. And that brings up Tim Rock Reigns. And he's out. So... We're going to the bottom of the fifth. Tie game at one. Napper up against Lee to lead off. He's out. Dickie Thon is up. He strikes out. Two down. And Terry Poole, two for two on the day. He is the big offensive star so far for the Houston Astro team. But even he gets out by uh, strikeout. And now we got Crow, Warren Crow Marty, up against Nepper. Both pitchers pitching quite well. Not giving up much. And that was an out. Dawson is up. Dawson would um, go on to play for the Cubs. And he hits it up the middle. Probably got a base hit. No, no, they got him. And Al Oliver's. And he is out. And yes, and back to the story about um, Dawson. He signed with the Cubs. And he told the Cubs, I'll sign for whatever you think I'm worth. And the Cubs actually signed him to the Major League Minimum. But he wanted to get out of Montreal. He didn't want to play on that hard surface anymore. He much preferred the grass of Wrigley Field. And Ray Knight is up here in the bottom of the sixth to lead off against Lee. And man, that is not good for throwing airs and base hits and all kinds of stuff there. So Knight is on second with Jose Cruz up. And he hits the ball to Flynn. And that does send Knight over to third. So Knight's 90 feet away with Phil Garner up and only one out. And he hits the ball in between third and short. He's out. And yes, they did hold him at third. So Ashby is up now. They will let him hit. And he looks like he's going to fly out to Dawson. Tremendous diving catch by Dawson, no less. And now Gary Carter is up in the seventh. Still, we're in a tie game at one. Montreal has two hits. Um, Houston has four. And that looks like maybe a home run, is it? No, it's caught. Another one. So, anyway, yeah, tied to one. Uh, Montreal has two hits. Houston has four. And both teams have an error. Wallet got aboard, though, so there's one down with Chris Spire up. And Wallet at first. And that's going to be a fly out. Of course, this was back in the day when 
even in the 80s, even as late as the 80s, pitchers were still pitching 260 innings. So both of these guys are capable of going the entire game. Doug Flynn is up. And he is going to ground out. So, seventh inning stretch, and now bottom of the seventh. Tim Scott is, uh, or not Tim Scott, Tony Scott. Tony Scott is up for the Astros. He strikes out. Charlie Lee has been masterful, and it's going to be a tough decision because I think Charlie Lee's coming up for us in the eighth. How? Looks like he's going to ground out, and he does. And Bob Nepper is up. Let's see if the uh, Astros pinch hit for him. They don't. Of course, I wouldn't have with two outs either. But now here he is, Charlie Lee, and I got a decision to make. And I am going to make it. I'm going to go and get a pinch hitter. Nepper is a lefty, so I am going to not bring in Dan Norman, but... We will go with Joel Youngblood. All right, so let's see here. Yep. Joel Youngblood pinch hitting. Let's see if he can get on and make this worth it, because Charlie Lee really was a masterful game, and it was tough to take him out. And he doesn't. So Tim Raines is up. Tim Raines, though, rips a hit. And he is definitely going to steal. Going to attempt to steal. And he is safe, so Warren Cromarty's up. And what's going to happen there? No, nothing good. And then Dawson is up. Let's see if Dawson can knock Reigns home and give us the lead. He might have. And he did. So it is 2-1 to one Montreal. So we get the run that I wanted. We just uh, wasted a pinch hitter because... Lee was really controlling this Houston team. And who knows if the reliever that I bring in... We'll do the same thing. But Oliver's out. So now, yes, I do have to change the pitcher. Uh, let me move this over so I can get the pitcher. So who are we going to bring in? Um, of course, this is back in the day when everybody was a starter reliever. But, um, yeah, I can bring in Reardon. Let's do that. We'll bring in Jeff Reardon. And he will pitch to Dickie Thon. And Dickie Thon reps, cut, he, he greets him with a hit. Um, I will, yeah, I am watching him, so. Jerry pulls up. He tried to get a lead and he couldn't, so now he only has a 40% chance and tries to take off and pull for two, three on the day. Gets a walk. So there's the first, Reardon lets the first two batters on, and this is why you don't do what I did and take Lee out of the game. And now the bases are loaded for the Astros and Cruz is up. And of course they have the infield in, and I guess that's got to be a good decision. And no, it gets through the infield and two run scores. So they take a three to two lead. And now they get another base hit, and they take a bigger lead. So it's 4-2. to two. Ashby is now out. So Reardon came in and just stunk the joint up, is basically what happened. Hmm. Yeah. yeah. So he's out. Tony Scott's up. There's one down. We're down by two now and uh, would need at least two runs, and that's if they don't get any more runs. And now 
Art Howe is up with two down and runners at second and third. Looks like he'll ground out, and he does, but we need two runs. And Gary Carter's up to try to start us off. Of course, the Astros are going to keep Nepper out there because, unlike me, they aren't stupid. So Carter's gone. Wallach is up. And that is going to be a race to the bag, and Wallach is safe. So Spire's up. I'm going to let Spire hit. And he does get a base hit. Nice. And I'm not going to try to press the advantage there. And Nepper's tired, so we're going to see him possibly be coming out. And I'm going to let, for right now, I'll let Flynn hit because it's righty on lefty. But no, he went to the pen, and he got a righty who's a 7L. So now I may have to get a pinch hitter. Let's go and see what we've got as far as our pinch hitter availability now that a righty is out there. And I will go get the manager of the Indians, Terry Francona. And he will pinch hit for Flynn. And he gets a base hit. Nice. Um, yeah, I'm going to hold runners. Because we need, we still need two runs. And, of course, Reardon, he stunk the joint up. So I'm happy to see him leave. No problem with that. And so we want another lefty. And I will put Mike Gates up to pinch hit for Reardon. And they do let him pitch, and what happens? A walk, nice! And now we're in within one. And there's only one out with the bases loaded, and Tim Raines up. And he grounds the ball, and it's going to be... What happened there? Did we die? No, we did not tie it. He had the infield in, I suppose. So the crow has to, it's all up to the crow. And he gets a base hit. And I am going to send the lead runner. And uh, that works. And Montreal takes a 5-4 lead. And now Dawson's up. And he hits the ball the other side to Denny Walling. And that's going to be it. But I have to bring in another pitcher because now they have the chance to go ahead since they are the home team in the bottom of the ninth. Uh, let's go with Woody Fryman. Yeah, let's go with Woody Fryman. And he'll be the uh, pitcher. And Francona, does Francona play second by any chance? No. Tavares does. And I think Dan Norman? No, no. So, yeah, we're going to go with Tavares at second even though he's terrible at second. So I've brought in a pitcher with worse statistics than um, Reardon, and I have a terrible sec defensive second baseman now at second base. But we did take the lead, and let's see if they let Dave Smith bat, and they won't. They're going to bring up Bill Duran, Duran, Duran. And he strikes out. Dickie Thon is up. He's one for four on the day. And he... He hit it foul. So he gets a chance, and now he rips it down the line, of course. So he's at second. Terry Poole's up. Terry Poole, of course, two for three with a walk and two runs scored. Hits the ball to short. And that is an out, and now Denny Walling's up. And he hits the ball to Tavares, and Tavares makes the play, and the Expos win a squeaker 5-4. Let's get the box score on that one. And uh, there you go. And see what the batters did. And then let's page down to the pitching. 
and uh, you can see uh, the win goes to Reardon undeservedly and uh, Fryman with the save. So, I mean, I say undeservedly. I mean, really, technically, by the rules, he deserved it, but not the way he pitched, he did. So, I hope you enjoyed that game. It was almost as good as it could have been, but, uh, you know, I want to remind everybody, leave a comment below, tell me how you liked the game, give me a thumbs up if you liked the video. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, please subscribe. It doesn't cost you anything. I don't have any commercials like a lot of other people do. And um, I got good content. So, hey, you know, it's a win, 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 win all the way around. But that's going to be it for me. Sportsman Z, Bob Zolke, signing off.